wrongs I have just begun. Ain't, ain't no mercy. Ain't, 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 ain't no mercy. Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, I'm with my good friend, Patriots34. Uh, he's a top ladder player, and he's been known across the tournament scene for a long time. And he's gotten pretty high on the leaderboards and won a lot of tournaments. Like, introduce yourself. Like, what do you like to play? Like, what things have you gotten in, like, Clash Royale? Anything you want? Yeah, so... I have won three Super Magical Cups, as most people probably would know. Yeah. I, um, last season, I actually managed to finish fourth on the account Ian with 500, with 5,894 trophies. Yeah, that's some good shit. And I was actually using Expo, believe it or not. Yeah, so, um, today we're gonna talk about Expo. I've been meaning to just uh for a long time ever since the poison nerf when expo really got on the rise and patriots like he was a he was a starter and founder of expo like he was the soul of expo back in the day in like uh sir Magical cup he also has a youtube channel down below i'll link it uh down below he has a1 qu content and uh we'll just like uh put some replays of expo in the background while um we talk about expo but first let's let's talk about the deck so um Expo itself, uh, it's consisting of Fire Spirits, Ice Golem, Rocket, Log, Expo, Inferno Tower, Archers, Mega Minion. Like, there are a lot of versions with this deck. Uh, mainly, like, uh, the other two versions are one with, with Pump, where they switch out uh, Rocket for Pump, or Rocket or Fire Spirits or Fireball, in a way so that they make it more, uh, they make it more heavy, where they... Try to build up a more heavy push with Expo instead of relying on the controlly siege element of Rocket, where you uh, try to chip them down with Rocket as much as possible. And uh, there's another version that Patriot specializes in, um, a cycle, a cycly version of Expo uh, with minions. Correct me if I'm wrong, Patriots. Yes, correct. Yeah, I, I know Patriots play that a lot, and a lot of top players are like calling it cancer because like they got cheesed with it really hard. Um. But yeah, uh, those decks are solid as well, but I found out the the, egg, the version with the rocket just fares the most uh, best with like multiple matchups, and it's one of the only like uh, versions I could withstand Royal Giants. Um, so I guess we'll talk about it. Like, what are your thoughts on like Expo, like starting hand, how to play it? Well, my on it are. Basically, if I have Expo in my starting hand, I'm going to play Expo right away because you do not know what your opponent has, so you can catch your opponent off guard. Say he doesn't have Golem in his first four cards. Say he doesn't have Royal Giant in his first four cards. Yeah, like right here, so like I only have Electro Wizard. I didn't have my Royal Giant cycle. He just stick me down straight down. Yeah. Anything else? Sorry. Um... Another thing to maybe not with this version of the deck, but with my Fireball Cycle version, is that you can actually beat a Royal Giant when he plays it on your Expo if you can just cycle cards and get back to it and put Expo on the other lane, and you can catch them off guard right away. But with this deck, I would say maybe play more controlly and play uh, use Rocket as your offense, and you'll most likely win. Yeah, what I find the most, uh, like, what I find, uh, the most challenging part of this deck is knowing when to balance Expo and Rocket. The first few times you play this game, you're gonna feel really overwhelmed with the amount of options you have. Just because of this deck, it has three highly cyclable cards I could place in the back. Fire Spirits, Archers, and Mega Minion. And a lot of them have the same ability to cycle and don't have that much of a difference if you place them in the back. And that gives you a lot of advantages so that you could cycle a deck in a certain fashion so that uh you can get that one strong expo push um uh, with the exact cycle needed to take out all the counters to expo because at the end of the day you're just trying to get your expo to penetrate and if you know what cards they have inside their deck uh you could easily take out their counters with your counters yeah definitely um so what i like to do in the beginning of the uh, matchup is I like to like drop a cycle card in the back 
uh, probably like uh, archers and mega minion and go off straight off with the uh, expo like Patriot said. Um, usually if they have a pump, I would rocket it instead. Uh, you really want to rocket pumps every single time because once they have a huge elixir advantage, even though you have a strong control base with Infernal Tower, you can be easily overwhelmed as archers are not like a musketeer or like a electro wizard where they could pretty much like defend almost anything. Uh, how do you like to like say like uh, build up that strong expo push to penetrate like use when do you like drop a defensive expo when do you like go on the offense i usually drop defensive expos only on furnaces barb huts or uh goblin huts you know stuff like that but i usually go on the offense uh this is when i know what type of deck they have i usually go on the offense when I have a couple more elixir than them, because if you push in and they have more elixir than you, your expo is going nowhere because they're going to have a counter and they're like, don't do it. Yeah, like um, pay. I mean, like uh, expo isn't a mortar where the fact it costs six elixir, so it's a it's a pretty heavy investment, and I would agree with the with the spawners a lot, especially like because expo clears it really well and the the like. The advantage of spawners is that you control the pace of the game, and um, really, it's just like uh, once you place the expo down, you're controlling the pace of the game. You take out the furnace, and they, they have to drop things into you, and when they drop things into you, your expo is going to continue to hit them. And once you do that, a lot of times you can drop a defensive expo and build up a offensive expo right afterwards, so that's really beneficial for you. And uh, things such as Inferno Tower uh, and like buildings to defend, I usually, when they defend your expo with like a building, uh, usually I like to like uh, let it go the first time because you don't know what they have. So they just drop a cannon straight over your face. Um, you can't really deal with it because the cannon really took out your expo to half health. So I would just keep that in mind every single time and you need your ice golem to block it. Or at least something such as like archers or mega minion up in front. Um, what do you exactly do for like uh, certain things such as like bowler, inferno tower, giant, like these like big tanky things that it's really hard to do for your expo? I usually place down, if I know they have a bowler already, I'll place down an ice golem. So the bowler locks onto the ice golem and then I'll use a mega minion because it's yeah. air and the bowler can't hear obviously. And that usually trips down the bowler, but they usually play something like archers or electro wizard behind it. Yeah, it's like you gotta finesse them. Like you gotta, you gotta be in the mind of the opponent, be the opponent. So like, um, finesse them with like certain card placements if you know where they're gonna placement. Um, such as sometimes they can drop. You know they're gonna drop a giant or a golem. So you drop an inferno tower to take them out from the bridge. This is uh, a pretty risky move considering the fact that where did not they have uh, like things such as electro wizard or like minions. Um, so a lot of the part of Expo is understanding your opponent's Psycho and Elixir and matching that well uh, Especially since you have to know that to be able to defend their pushes against your Expos So um, I know a lot of people See Expo placed on very like left on, or on the very right side of the river like uh, When do you exactly do you place? Um, Expo in the middle or like different placements and like, um, I oh sorry, place Expo in the middle when they have ground troops, like, not, like non-range ground troops, like Knight yeah. or Ice Golem to like, so they can't like directly put it on your Expo. And you can like use a Mega Minion to get rid of it, and it's much nicer to get your Expo onto the tower because your Expo will have more health to walk into the tower, so you'll get off quite a lot of damage. Yeah, um, and I guess like uh, a lot of people are daunted by the fact that Expo, it's like a one one crown situation where if you lose a tower, uh, the Expo is going to be extremely hard to come back from uh, because of the fact that Expo, once they take out the tower where your Expo is going on, uh, Expo, they can just drop things on top of your Expo and it's really hard to defend that. That's why a lot of people like to split push with Expo to apply pressure, and that's why... Uh, 
like a lot of people don't go all in with the expo push or trade towers because they know that uh it's gonna be risky once if once one of their towers are down so like how do you deal with that when do you split push i mean like you're the expo master well with a tower down probably what i do is spam like troops i would spam like an ice golem fire spirits archers just to like protect my expos so i can save as much health as I can to get it on tower. Or I'd go for the rocket cycle strategy because yeah. I know that it's direct damage and they can't stop it no matter what. But the time is when to rocket it. Because if you rocket at the wrong time and they hard push you and that's the end of the game right there. It all depends on what kind of deck they have to offer against yours. Yeah, and that's like really the name of the game. Like understanding your opponent with as the expo player <laughs> over here in Patriots like uh, we're not we're not gonna talk about this the expo placement, but um, uh, yeah, like a lot of times, uh, you want to rocket cycle on the tower because after all it's like a guaranteed damage. But like I said, this isn't like a a minor rocket deck or like a a minor a control like burn deck. Uh, the deck after all is an expo deck because expo is such a big investment. You have to build a deck around expo. So um. Uh, I would only recommend dropping Rocket on the tower when you know you can get value. Say like they drop a bowler in the back because they know you're going to drop Rocket soon. Or like, I mean, uh, Expo soon. Or like, uh, you know that you just dropped a defensive Expo or something to give you control of the temple. Uh, and that you have the right cards inside your deck to defend against their pushes. Because um, even though you have the Inferno Tower... And things such as Ice Golem, Mega Minion Archer, it's really good defensive cards and fast cycle too, so you could uh, uh, bring out your counters really quickly. Um, you're gonna be stuck on a really bad cycle where they just keep on sending pushes at you, where you can't even take out an expo. Um, because uh, a lot of times the defensive capabilities of this deck is compounded when you can apply pressure with expo. Like you say, they drop a. Uh, a hog on the other lane, you know you can defend that with an infernal tower, then you immediately expo it. So like, um, and you see it right over here, I try to go for the graveyard, uh, right over here, like, soon. And then, uh, he just cockblocks it with an archers, I couldn't even poison it to take out the archers, and he just drops the, uh, expo, and I'm completely dead, cause I'm nothing. So, um, like, Patriots, how do you deal with the more, like, bad matchups, such as, like, Golem, uh, Golem, Royal Giants, Giant Bowler, things such as that. Okay, for the first one, Golem. What I'd recommend is whenever they pump up, see that as your opportunity to push. Don't see that as an opportunity to rocket with their pump, because you say you may not even have rocket. So you definitely want to expo offensively as soon as they pump up, because you know you can stop their pushes, even though they do have lightning. And one thing I'd recommend is never place your Inferno Towers against the river when they have lightning because they can use like an Electro Wizard or minions to easily distract Inferno and that's just a waste of an elixir. You're better off getting that Inferno or like For against Giant Bowler, I would recommend, uh, depending on where they place their Giants and Bowlers, I would Lightning whatever, or Rocket whatever they do. If they place a Giant in the back or towards the middle, I would rocket it. If they place a bowler in the back or towards the middle, I would rocket it. Anything you can get value with the rocket for is what I would do. And against the last one, Royal Giants. Same strategy there. I would kind of rocket rocket them out and make sure that um, their Royal Giant doesn't get the power. Because you can absorb some lightning damage because every day um, your uh, rocket is going to outcycle or do more damage than their lightning. So they cannot do a spell cycle with you. Yeah. And uh, like, how do you deal with like Bar Putt? Cause that's a really big tanky uh, spawner for like uh, Expo to deal with. It's almost impossible to get through it. Yeah, I would honestly play more defensive Expos than anything yeah. and try to get value with the rocket as much as possible. But if they uh, don't have enough Elixir to play Bar Putt, I would sometimes play my Expo maybe like six or seven and um, like try to outcycle the barbut so they can't play it and maybe get lucky and get the expo to tower. Yeah. Just like snipe snipe out all of those barbuts. Um so 
like AK-47 them. Uh, you know, it's really hard a lot of times to get that expo to lock on. And like, uh, you know, when you lock on, it's like an ex boner and it's like, uh, it's a feels good man. But like, uh, um, also what I, I usually like to do with, uh, with this deck because it has such a strong control factor because it's expo control, like yes, a lot of the same cards such as like minor, uh, rocket, but instead it packs, um, expo. Like when, when you know they're just going to tank your, um, Expo with Golem or Giant or so on. I, I would like uh, for you to instead of expoing, like just send in some psycho troops to like apply a tiny bit of pressure, such as like uh, fire spirits or like archers, and then you know that they don't have enough elixir to uh, t to take out your infernal towers or so on. Just defend, defend the golem instead of trying to like face it up straight up. And then after that, once they have no elixir, when they just pumped up or so, uh, then you go in for the opportunity. You come in like with a cheeky push on the on the left side and you just completely take them down. So um, I guess we can do one live battle with Patriots, where uh, he plays Expo and I'll play like a a giant bowler, and we we can show you the matchup. Uh, we're back with the giant bowler action. Like this is like the OG deck uh, back in the day, the matchups uh, where giant bowler was the biggest nemesis because it has two tanky troops with its strong beatdown force. So right now, uh, I guess we can pop minions in the bag. Uh, I'm gonna be the giant bowler player. Patriots gonna be the expo player. So you can definitely see how he's playing the matchup. He's going slow row right now because. Pub doesn't have X1 starting hand. He never. He doesn't want to make some huge investments, and I'm not gonna make any huge investments right now, either. So right now we're in a sort of stalemate. Funny thing is, the expo was my last card. <laughs> Answer. I'm gonna let that bowler lock on. I'm gonna use my archers. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll just log them out. And now that he knows that bowler, uh, uh, he understands what to play against it. Oh yeah, see? Um, because of the fact that he dropped Expo on the other side, I didn't have enough elixir to support that push. And that giant just got completely melted. And that was in the green knife. Shit, my body isn't ready for an Expo right now. But... Tombstone is another really annoying thing against Expo because it just completely distracts it. And this is where Log comes into play a lot of times. I'm gonna need to get some uh, damage somewhere, yeah. so. See, like, that, um, that rocket? Because he, I, I didn't have any good pushing troops at the time, and he knows that. And he just rockets, gets a value in, and now I know he has rockets, so I'll be more careful. But like the first rocket is always the most deadliest. Okay. So now I know he has an Inferno Tower. So uh, he probably will drop Fire Spirits. I'm gonna drop that. Lightning. Uh, Ice Golem tanks for the bowler, and I can't really do anything with that. So I'm just gonna reset with the tombstone. Yeah, and this is the point where he gets like uh, he knows that he can't he can't get past my uh my giant bowler because it's two tanky troops that he has to deal with. Expo is gonna be locked on forever. Uh, here he's applying pressure. Uh, my bowler managed to get past that though, so that's pretty good for me. Ice Golem. Uh, yeah, it's a rip. Yeah, that that was a rip. But like, like. Me Mega Minion is just still doing damage and I just can't get through. You see, he could just keep on rocketing now. Yeah. Uh, nice rocket by me because I missed it. Oh shit! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Let's just pretend that it hit, okay? <laughs> A1 quality gameplay right now. Oh god. Um, We're just gonna drop Dry in the back. Uh, that bowler is completely wasted now because he dropped that expo, forced me to go against. And now is the point where you usually want to give up the expo because you know 
Yeah. But now, that rocket was a bit iffy just because of the fact that um, I have a huge push coming at him. But he's so close to winning the game. And Giant Bowler can't really do it. So now I just really need to apply pressure. Oh god. Beautiful um, Inferno Tower placed on by him. Completely, uh, it's a spot where Lightning cannot hit, hit that in the tower for the double kill. <laughs> oh my god. We got finesse, boys. We got finesse. Yeah, and that's a rocket, and uh, another rocket, and that's a GG. And, anyways, guys, um, this is gonna be it. Because uh, Expo is Siege after all. Uh, it fares extremely well against things such as control, such as like Hog Rider, uh, Spell Bait, Minor Control, and things such as that. So like, those matches are really good, and I advise you to play Expo, like, as your pocket pick. Especially because of the fact that like, Expo, like, it does well ex ex exceptionally. And it has some harder matchups, such as Royal Giant and Golem, but you can really defeat it. And yeah, guys, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace out, um, check out Patriot's channel down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.